So it is Saturday, August 3rd. Actually, it's Friday. I'm recording this ahead of time, but it is the Mad Pixel Weekend News. We got a couple things I want to quickly talk about, rant and ramble about, hear what you guys have to say about these things. And we got it. We got a couple of them, a couple of them. Game Informer. This one's kind of annoying, man. 33 years that this magazine's been around. If you didn't know, they started out in 1991 as a Funko Land newsletter. It's like a few page newsletter. Holy crap, I love Funko Land. Those were the days, man, till GameStop started gobbling up all these damn companies. Holy crap. But you know, Game Informer, they've been around for a long ass time and they just, bam, they're gone. As of today, Friday, they just disappeared. They closed up shop. From what I've been seeing from people who work for Game Informer, I mean, all the staff, they're just gone. But they were almost done with their next issue. Comple- they, they were almost completely done, but they just shut down. Gone. They've been having a, a, a crazy past few years. 2019, like when GameStop was having some issues. Boom. They let go half of Game Informer's staff. Layoffs. Gone. 2022, they let go a few more people who are long-term employees, just gone. That's it. They've been doing some changes with this magazine over the years. They're trying to like really push the digital aspect of it. Like I guess they they're tr- I think they were trying to get out of the print side of things, which really sucks. Like I, I I used to have Game Informer magazine when I, you know, I'm not gonna go into the whole GameStop thing, but I, I kind of shied away from going to GameStop. But I, I would get this magazine when it was, you know, you would have the power up rewards thing. You would pay for that. And then you would get Game Informer as a subscription, get sent to you. You know, and they started changing all that. And it would be part of like a higher tier. I think a couple years back or something, it'd be part of a higher tier. And then if you weren't part of that tier, if you wanted it, it like they kept changing things. You get a digital one. I, I don't know. But then like even just earlier this year, from what I understand, they had like an anniversary thing they were doing because like I said earlier, the magazine came out or it was a newsletter. Initially it was game informer through Funko land. It was a newsletter that they put out through Funko land stores, uh, 1991, $19, 91 cents. They would, you would get 10 issues. They started that this year in March. And then now it's just all of a sudden gone. Like you paid the $19.91 in March, you would get the physical 10 issues and then you'd get digital access. And that's all gone. That's nuts. Just like everybody with this company is is gone. It's crazy that this kind of stuff happens. I don't even know that there's any more video game magazines left in the US. Like you remember, man, we had GamePro, EGM. There's a bunch, man. There'd be like console specific ones as well. Nintendo Power. Oh man, this room like this sucks. Like if you just subscribe to this, like try to get your money back. I know there's like an email you can ask for a refund, but it reminds me of like 2000, 2001. I don't remember the exact freaking year. There is an official Dreamcast magazine and I subscribed to it. And then when like it came time to resubscribe, I think it was 2000, 2001, I resubscribed paid my $20 for the next year, and then they shut down. Never got another issue, never got my $20 back. Them mofos. They owe me 20 bucks, dude. Like, and I, I never got it back. So try to get your money back, um, you know, if you subscribe. But it sucks. I, I've been seeing people work for this company that said that they can't get on the site. They can't get work that they they want to back up, stuff like that. If you try to get to, like, the digital access, like, subscription access – like I'm on like, okay, I, I Googled game informer digital, go to digital subscription access. You click on it. It just goes to this landing page. That freaking sucks, dude. Like everything's gone. There's no access from what I'm hearing though. People are putting together an archive of all the uh, previous magazines, but it sucks that the, the latest issue was almost done. Now it's not going to come out. It, it It's nuts, dude. Like, Every once in a while, I'll go to like Barnes and Noble and I'll buy like Edge Magazine or like Retro Gamer. And those are like imports from like the UK. They're expensive as heck, man. But I, I love print media, you know, physical media in my hands, uh, you know, and magazines. It's just, it's the way the world is now. It sucks that, you know, people work for Game Informer. They're, you know, just abruptly no more. They don't have a job. It's, I don't know, journalists and stuff like this. It's just, it's, it's been a harsh thing lately, 
But um, yeah, let me know what you think of this. You know, were you a Game Informer fan? Like, I'm not really a GameStop fan, but Game Informer, yeah, I would read the magazine when I had it, and I always enjoyed it, you know? But let, let's move on to the next thing real quick. So I saw this a couple days ago, and I, I have some thoughts, and I know people are going to hate on me, but I've talked about this plenty of times in the past. Not this specific story, obviously, but this kind of thing. So unreleased SNES Dragon Quest prototype could be lost for good as the only alleged copy of the 1993 JRPG worth 50,000. Who gets to say what it's worth? Worth 50,000? Give me a break. Was sold to a private collector. Okay, so this game was Torniko's Great Adventure Mystery Dungeon. And it was a game where you collected items and randomized dungeon as the merchant from Dragon Quest IV. It was a game that never was released or translated outside of Japan. But in this paragraph, I'm not going to read the whole thing. There's whispers about an official unreleased English version called Taloon's Great Adventure. And they mentioned some people, Game Counselor and some others, that said like they playtested it, talked about it, and mentioning it. it. Sounds like it was legit. It was a legit thing. So then that brings us here to this eBay listing, right? So I have it pulled up. It's an archived listing where it was being sold for like $50,000. Now, it's been removed. It was sold privately, apparently. Taloon's Mystery Dungeon is what it was going to be called. Dragon Dragon Quest, Taloon's, you know, whatever, great adventure. $50,000, that's nuts. Like I said, who gets to decide what these damn things are worth? The prototype was in private possession, apparently, for a good 20 years, and was never publicly exhibited or given away, so not backed up, dumped, or anything. Okay, the listing stretches back as far back as 2022, but it seems like the seller did eventually find someone who matched the whopping price tag. So people have been talking about it. Looks like he sold it to a private collector. So now people in the community are like, well, it looks like it's lost for good. And looks like people are trying to negotiate to get it for less because they say it's not worth $50,000. And I would tend to agree. Why would it be worth that much money? Now, <laughs> people are upset. People are upset, and I get it. I get it. Now, I've said this before. I have said this before with stuff like this. Like, say, for example, if I found an unreleased Super Mario game or something like that for the NES, and I had it, and then, say, Private Collector was like, I will give you a million dollars, some life-changing money, just whatever, whatever you consider life-changing money. I will give you life-changing money if you give me that. You do not dump it. You do not publicly give it out. I take it, exchange the money, and I'm never going to publicly allow anybody to ever have access to this. Yup, it's yours. Money exchanged, no problem. I don't care. Right? I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I don't care. It's gone. I'm taking that money, taking care of my family, taking care of my bills, going to be living good for a while. That's what's happening. Why? You tell me you wouldn't do the same. Come on now. Like, really? Really? Because this is a this was a, a product, yes, a product that, it, like, in the even the example that I'm making up, hypothetically, you know, the product that was meant to be a commercial item, not something that's changing the world. Who cares? None of us had any, like, reasonable right to it. Like, we had no right to this to begin with, to preserve it, to have access to it. None of us had any right to it. So if this private collector wants it, who cares? It doesn't make sense to me for a private collector to just want to hoard it to themselves and never allow anybody to take a look at it, to have access to it. It doesn't make sense to me. Like, they're going to die eventually with that and never have shared it. It's like, whatever. But for people to get so upset about something they never had a right to to begin with, and just claim that, well, it should be preserved. Why should it be preserved? Like, this example is a game that already exists as a Japanese version. Okay, this does have, like, an English actual, like, title screen that never existed before, an official English translation. I get it. I get that. But we never had a right to this. Nobody did. To preserve it for what reason? Historical reasons? That's what a lot of people do say should be preserved for historical reasons. Okay, but what's what's that going to do in the future? Nothing. Most people who say this, they just want to have access. 
Let's be honest with ourselves. Most people who want stuff like this preserved is because they want to play it. They're selfish. I'm selfish. I would love to have this preserved too because I want to play it. I'm not going to lie. But at the same time, this person who sold it for like possibly $50,000, maybe that was life-changing money for them. Maybe they paid off their mortgage. Maybe they paid off some credit card debt. Maybe they paid off some medical bills. Who knows? I'm not going to judge them. And I don't care. I don't care. It would have been awesome for this to be publicly made available. But at the same time, none of us had any right to it to begin with. So it was a product. It was a product. The historical importance of it is insignificant. There, I said it. None of this stuff is historically significant. They're video games. It's not changing anything. It's for entertainment. It's fun. I get it. People are going to be mad that I said these things. Shame on me. Oh, my God. But it's true. It's true. It's not changing anything. The preservation of it's not going to do anything. It, a lot of times, these things are not even finished products to begin with. So what, is it, what does it serve? to be backed up, to be dumped for people. It's just selfish. It's selfish. At the same time, I do agree. It would be nice, but it, ah. All right. Let me know what you guys think. Be gentle. Bye.